got a new job and I'm scared. <laughs> That's really all I can say. Um, I am really excited, uh, but I also have a lot of anxiety around it. Um, and I'm hoping to kind of share that today. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and jump right into this thing. I thought I would first start by sharing exactly the process of getting in this new position. It was a little unorthodox, but not too unorthodox. I also um, wanted to share with you guys how I negotiated my salary because I was able to do that and get a little bit of extra money, uh, which was kind of exciting. Felt like a nice little win. And then I was hoping to talk a little bit more about the anxiety that I'm feeling around it and just the general like excitement, but yet tension that comes with starting a new job and a role that is um, really kind of at a higher level than what I've done in the past. Now, this new position that I did accept, it is within my company and within my current department. So the job originally opened up because one of my coworkers is leaving to switch careers and we knew exactly the date she would be leaving the company. So my current boss's boss was able to um, talk to people about the position um, and had quite a bit of time to actually select the right candidate for it. She put out an email about a month ago letting everyone know that this coworker would be leaving that they had an estimated time of year she would be leaving and that if anyone was interested in actually learning more about the position to set up a meeting with my boss's boss. Um, and when that email went out, they detailed out all the different types of work that position does and it sounded absolutely perfect. Um, I was really excited. I kind of knew that that person would be leaving probably in the future, but I didn't really think about the implications of that and the fact that they would obviously need to fill that role. But as soon as I saw it, I kind of lost my mind. Um, the biggest caveat was that I was underqualified for the position. Um, people with this position normally have five years of work within the department before they can get promoted to this position. And I currently have about two years and two months in the role. So from the get go, I was not the right candidate. Regardless of that, I talked to my husband and he said, you lose 100% of the shots you don't take. Basketball reference, I think, not a sports person, but I felt like he was right. So I shot my shot. I emailed her back, gave all the reasons why I specifically wanted to talk to her about this role, even though I probably could have just emailed and said, hey, like, let's set up a time to chat. I wanted to be really forthright and maybe a little bit more aggressive. That's kind of my style in the workspace. I'm an over communicator and not an under communicator, but I thought it would be best to show her who I really was because up until this point, she knew of me, but we had never really worked individually. Um, a few weeks prior, I had identified a problem within the department and she was the one who was able to fix that problem and she didn't realize that it was a problem. So we had a few email exchanges about that, but really that's all she really knew me for. And I, wanted to make sure I was giving a really complete picture of who I was because I know that when you're working closely with others, personality is really important and you want to be really clear and open and honest about who you are as a person so that hopefully the people hiring you will choose you because of your personality and your personality will be an overall asset 
to them. We ended up setting up a meeting and during that meeting, she told me more about what the position entailed. I felt like it was exactly what she had originally said in the email and I was still really excited about it. She did mention that the um, biggest problem would be that I was technically completely underqualified for the position um, and that she wasn't sure if HR would let them give it to someone who is lacking the five years of experience. But she also said that if we could use some of my previous work experience to make a case, they could try to do that. And I did have three years prior work experience working in, in an office setting, which is not necessarily exactly what I do, but it is an office setting. So I did take that into consideration and to note, she let me know that they would be posting the job in the coming week and that she would be emailing about it. As soon as the job was posted, I drew up a cover letter that matched pretty much exactly what the original email I sent to the hiring manager about the position and, and also updated my resume to also reflect more accurately the work I had done in the past that would actually align with the current position. So knowing the different things they were looking for and making sure that the experiences that I had listed on my resume were things I would most likely talk about in the interview because they would be relevant to the position I was applying to. If you want a video all about um, how I go about updating my resume and my cover letters for each job, definitely let me know. I could definitely go into that. I have a very systematic way I try and think about it and it might be helpful to someone who knows. Um, regardless of that, I did also make sure that it was very clear that I did have three years of work experience in an office setting prior to starting at the company so that you could really see all five years of experience that they were trying to get. A week later, they set up an interview with me. It was a 15 minute interview. That's what the calendar invite was, 15 minutes. And I could tell from the calendar, cause I'm a snoop, that there were four other people also applying for the job and also got interviews. So I knew I had about a one in five chance of getting the job, obviously based on whoever they selected. Like I, it was hard to know who got interviews and if they were people that would fit well in the position. I did know that there was at least one person who applied for the position who had about 10 years of experience on me, but other people who applied for it, I wasn't really sure of what their work experience was or even um, what their quality of work is currently within the department because I don't work with them very frequently or I had no idea who they were. But I was definitely really nervous especially because the interview schedule time was only 15 minutes. I really wanted to make sure I got all my points across in those 15 minutes and let the chips fall where they may. On the day of the interview, I did have a whole sticky note of all the different bullet points that I did want to mention. I knew the programs that I wanted to work on and the processes that I wanted to improve, which is a major part of the role, is just fixing things that are broke or improving things that could be more efficient. And I also wanted to mention projects in the past that were applicable to the role and also proved that I had the ability to manage these types of projects. I was asked 10 whole questions in the 15 minute interview and I successfully answered all 10 questions within the 15 minute time period. We pretty much jumped on the call. The hiring supervisor reiterated the job that I was applying to, asked me if I had any questions about it since we had kind of already talked about what the job entailed. And without further ado, we started answering questions. The weirdest question I got that I gave a terrible answer for uh, was, and I had never heard this question before in an interview. I found it very interesting that she asked this, but her question was, what 
makes you do a good job at your job. And I don't know, I've asked a few people how they would answer this question, but like after the interview, because I just thought it was such a interesting question to ask, because I do try and do a really good job at my job, but like, why? <laughs> so I just blurted out, I don't know, self-preservation, <laughs> which is just so cringy to think about, but like, in reality, I feel like people who want to do a good job at their job are most often doing it for self-preservation. There's probably a million different ways you can answer this question, but like, in all honesty, I'm like, I don't know, I want people to think I do a good job, and the only way I can prove that I do a good job is by doing a good job. <laughs> Hence, self-preservation. But yeah, so that was a little bit of a weird one. It felt pretty cringy when I answered it, mostly because I was like, I don't know how to handle this question. Like, this is so weird, can we move on? Um, and like literally in the interview was like, I don't know if that was a good answer, but it was definitely an honest one. <laughs> Do you have more questions? So yeah, a little cringy overall. But after that, we moved on to the rest of the questions and then wrapped up that meeting. I do know I was the first of all the interviews and they also said that they would get back to us fairly quickly. It was kind of one of those days where you're like, okay, I put it all out on the line, but most likely they had a really good idea of who they wanted for the position before we even did the formal interviews because we had previously spoke for 30 minutes about the position and she did that with everyone else who was interviewing and we also had our previous work experience and had relationships within the department that were either good or they were not as good so it was one of those days where I kind of let it all go after that and tried to decompress and to not stress because all that I could do was officially out of my hands. Three business days later, I got a email from our HR department. And the email said, can we take some time to follow up on your recent interview? And I knew that was the email that people got when they we're about to get offered the job. So I freaked out. <laughs> I was so freaking excited. I had wanted this job so badly because I was so interested in the work it was going to do. The ability to work on different projects and process improvements. So freaking excited. So I tried to keep my cool and I got on the phone with the hiring HR rep and they were able to offer me the position at salary $47,500, which is more than I currently make, but is also less than a lot of people I work with make. So it was kind of a double-edged sword. Um, it was exciting because it was about $5,000 more than what I currently make but it didn't fully feel commiserate with the work that I was going to do. This position works with the management team to pretty much take on management type projects that the actual managers don't have time for in their day. And because of that, I was expecting to at least make 50K because when you're working on these sorts of high level projects and you are representing the site on a regional level, you would think that they would make more money than that. I did decide to negotiate my salary, mostly because I am currently an hourly worker and I average about $42,000 a year before overtime but I do quite a bit of overtime in my position. Typically, 
thus far this year, I've averaged about two and a half hours of overtime every single week. And I really didn't want to move to a salary position and be expected to work overtime, but not get paid overtime, and especially at $47,500 a year. So I drafted up an email to our HR hiring rep and said, thank you for the offer. Based on some reflection of mine, I've looked at how much project managers typically make and I have really great experience working on very similar projects to the ones that this position would do. And it also represents the Midwest for our department. And I believe that the salary more commiserate with the description of the job is $53,876. He said, thank you for letting me know. I'll talk to some people and see what we can do. So I did ask for a little over $5,000 more than what they originally offered because quite frankly, I just wanted to make at least 50K a year. Like that was my goal. I wanted to hit that threshold and then I would be fine because I do know that the job will give me great experience for future roles if I'm interested in business optimization or management. I waited and I waited so long that I ended up reaching out to the HR hiring rep and saying, hey, any news? <laughs> and he got back to me and let me know that they countered at $49,000 a year and that there would be more room for growth within the position, which means we're going to offer you $49,000 a year and we aren't negotiating any further. So it was $1,500 than what they originally had offered me. And even though it wasn't the $50,000 I was hoping for, I did decide to take it. I had the whole weekend to think about how I felt about everything. And if they didn't give me what I was asking or maybe weren't willing to budge at all, what I would do. And I did decide that I really wanted this job and that even though it might not be at the amount of money I wanted, I was willing to do it anyways. With that, I did accept the position at $49,000 a year, which is salary. Just to kind of give you a comparison, if for the rest of the year in my current position, I work four and a half hours of overtime every week, which really isn't crazy for the job. It could definitely have happened. I would be making the same exact amount of money. It is kind of hard when you are going from hourly to salary because you do in an hourly position get to actually put a dollar amount of value on your hours and you do get to charge the company for when they spend your time. In this new salary position, I am a little concerned about exactly how many hours a week they will be expecting me to work. I know that when big deadlines come up, they're most likely going to be asking me to do quite a bit of overtime, but I'm hoping during the downtimes, I'll be able to work a little less than 40 hours a week. I also won't have sick leave anymore like I currently do. It'll just be like I can take sick time whenever, when currently I only have five days of sick time. So that's also going to be a little bit different and I'm not really sure exactly how that will work either. Overall, my biggest anxiety that I'm feeling about the job is just kind of that like uncomfortable feeling of a new challenge. I know that they have a really good idea of who I am as a person and as an employee and hopefully they picked me because they like that about me. And I do know that the experiences that I'll get in this position could really lead to a lot of doors opening, but it is harder when you're getting into those higher level roles to really like navigate relationships and professionalism within the role. And I do know that those are kind of areas that I need to grow in overall. And I hope that even though on paper I'm technically underqualified, 
that I will be able to represent myself well to the right people because I will be interacting with more people who have a lot more weight within the company. <clears throat> I also really hope that I do a good job because the position is mostly based on taking out projects that the team needs to work on and figuring out how to make things work. It's going to be a lot different than my current job because right now I do like production work. So there's a bunch of people just like me who do the same exact job and there's a certain way to do it and you have to put it all together and get it out the door. But with this, it's more fluid and open and there's deadlines, but they're not as time sensitive and I'll really have to take a lot more ownership with my new role and say, hey, I own this thing. It's really important and it impacts a lot of people. But I also have to balance that with knowing that I could work 80 hours a week for this job and maybe not get paid the right amount for that or not be as valued as I think I am. So it'll be a balance between giving it my all but not giving too much of myself to my company which I feel like is a big concern when you are working salary is to not like become the job. And I definitely know I struggle with having boundaries between me and work. So that's also where a lot of my anxiety is at currently, but I'm hoping it'll be a really good thing. I do start the new position in two months from now. So I have a little bit more time to kind of gather my thoughts and hopefully build some confidence because I feel like that's definitely something I'm needing right now. But if you do have any thoughts, definitely comment them down below. And I would love if you would subscribe as well. And yeah, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.